Hi everyone, Rob Clays here from Progression and today I'm going to have a chat with you about wing foiling. So it's kind of like the new hotness, it's what everyone's having a go at the moment. Uh, you see them everywhere on the water here in the UK and I'm sure everywhere else around the world. I'm being a little bit late to the party when it comes to wing foiling. But um, you know, I've been getting into it over the last few weeks. I'm starting to see some of the appeal. I'm still on the fence a little bit about exactly when I want to do that over my kiting sort of disciplines. But I just finished writing a new blog post, learning to wing foil seven tips after seven days. Uh, you can check that out on the Progression website. Even though I'm quite new to wing foiling, I'm definitely starting to pull out little bits of insight which I thought might help some of you who are also uh, in these early stages and trying to learn some of these techniques. So in this video I'm going to look at three main topics that lead on nicely from that blog post and go into a little bit more detail. The first one is stance which you know is a vital technique if you're going to basically save a lot of energy. It can be quite tiring wing foiling to start with and if we can get the right stance that'll have a big impact in everything you do. Secondly we're going to look at uh, the jibe carving round to toe side or toe side to heel side. There's one key thing that sort of came to me after starting to get that that I think might help some people that I, I, I see other friends out learning that are having trouble. And then third up, we've got the foot change. Really, really helpful technique to learn and coming from kite foiling, actually quite straightforward. So I've taken a lot of the things I've learned from that and the videos I've made and hopefully we can get a few more of you uh, foot changing a little bit easier. So anyway, let's dive in. Let's start with stance then. So the key thing when it comes to stance is, you know, we're looking for a, uh, a body position and a way of holding the wing and controlling the foil that allows us to use as much as least energy as possible. For coming from kite foiling, we're used to being able to hook in, but now as a wing foiler, we're just we've got our arms, we're just hanging on there. But there's, I think actually coming from windsurfing, this is one of those areas, the stance, where windsurfers have a bit of an advantage because you're actually using a kind of windsurfing stance. When you're starting, you're going to be in this kind of survival stance. Quite tense, bent legs, bent arms, like just kind of muscling through it. This is really tiring. You're going to start to feel your forearms really starting to cramp up. And you, you know, after half an hour, you might think, oh, I've just got to stop now and have a break. Whereas I'm getting to the point now where I can ride for two hours and I'm physically exhausted at the end of it, but my arms are still absolutely fine. What we want to be doing is taking all that sort of weight out of arms and putting it more into the shoulders and transferring it down to these bigger body muscles that can just the skeletal kind of uh, uh, strength. So we want to transition and we can see it here really nicely going from bent legs with bent arms and then going into this far more straighter body, straight arms. Key thing is we're getting our hips forwards and our shoulders back. And once we get into this position and we get comfortable with it, what we actually find is our weight is nicely over the board but also the wing becomes a lot lighter in our hands and we actually start to feel like we can move it around. So not like dynamically, but you can put it into positions where actually you start to feel a lot more balance, where it actually feels really light on the hands. I generally find now when I'm riding, my front arm is actually very straight and is just locked out, keeping that front position and my back hand is just doing a very sheety moment, much like a windsurfer. So your back arm might get a little bit more tired. You might start using a bit of your tricep but quite often then you find a nice position, you lock out and you're just cruising along. So how do we get into this position? This is the key bit. You've got to get those hips forwards. It's classic windsurfer stance, hips forwards, shoulders back, straight arms. How do we get our hips forwards? Imagine you've got a golf ball between your butt cheeks. You've got it in there and you've got to keep it in there. How do you hold something between your butt cheeks? You've got to tense those glute muscles and in tensing those glute muscles, it will push your hips forwards. Get your hips forwards, shoulders come back more naturally, and you're gonna be in that nice stance. And I, I guarantee you, it will transform everything. I went from like 30 minutes riding, just feeling like I'm gonna to have to go in, and it just clicked for some reason, and I transitioned into that stance, and it just, suddenly your hands are really light, holding the handles, and it just feels like there's very little pull. Suddenly you've got a lot more control once you get that stance right and things like jibes will start to become a little bit easier. You can start having a go at them. The thing about the jibe is it's all about front foot pressure. It's about getting weight onto your front foot. So with winging, I was kind of looking into how do I get weight onto that front foot? Like what is, how do I achieve that? And for me, obviously it's all about the wing. It's where we position that wing to allow us to keep weight forwards. 
And what started to come really, really clear to me as I started doing more and more jibes is the more that I extended my arms forwards and got that wing out in front as I'm carving round, the more it allowed me to keep weight on my front foot. You know, these foils glide so amazingly well and if you just keep weight forward, it will just keep going. This is the key thing to focus on. You're coming round and you keep your arms nicely extended and you keep that wing forwards. And if you let go of your backhand, it will just fly nice and easy. And if you keep it forward, you can keep weight on your front foot as you reach round and you reach to change your backhand, keep it in front. Don't pull it over the top of you. So you're not like changing it and bring it in here. You're always reaching for the handle, reach forward to grab handles when you're, when you're changing your body position. Keep that rig forwards and you allow you to pull you around the turn. Now the other area that we need to think about is the way in which we carve. You may be used to really leaning into a turn, carving really hard off an edge. With a foil, we don't do that. It's all about this front foot pressure. It's about using the yaw of the, of the foil, which is this kind of side to side movement. So we initiate the turn with a small amount of weight on our toes, really small, keeping our weight nicely up and over the board. And by keeping that wing forwards and that power forwards, it allows to pull the nose of the board round. But that doesn't come from leaning in hard. You're not doing that here. Just lightweight on the toes, wing forwards, and allow that power to pull the nose of the board round. Third up, foot change. For me, the foot change was straightforward because my foot change on a kite foil is 99.9% .9 of the time. Doing it on a wing foil is so much easier because the thing is so damn stable. So, you know, I'm looking about how I can translate those skills over and actually think, how's that gonna work for you guys that maybe have never done a foot change on a foil before. Now, my initial way of doing it is very similar to how I do it on a kite foil. I pop the board. I generate lift in the foil so it's rising up. I step into that extra lift so that when all my weight comes forwards over both my front feet, the board's pushing up into my feet. That gives me loads of control and then I can step back nice and easily. And though it may seem like you're having to make a bigger movement with the board and you're moving your body around a lot, actually it's such a, a simple, graceful step forward and back when you get it right. You're, you're, you're not actually doing a huge amount. It takes very little effort. Now I have had a bit of feedback on that initial blog post of some surfers who are saying, actually, you know what, we're just literally like jumping our feet around. Um, in the same way that we pop up on the board on a surfboard and we're used to just getting our feet underneath us. Um, and I can kind of see that works. These foils are so stable, particularly in the bigger, wing, bigger wings that we're riding. I still think the pop of the board and popping it up and stepping in is in many ways could be more straightforward because it gives you time. By popping the board up, you can step forward, you can step back, you can make mistakes. Key thing is you, you're trying to keep your weight centered over the board and the foil. You don't want to be leaning backwards and that's where a lot of people they pop around to their toe and then fall over their toe side edge. The other little tip um, which comes from my kite surfing background is with kiting when we foot change the toe side quite often we push down onto the bar. Not, not sheeting in but we actually push into the lines to give us some stability downwind. We can do exactly the same thing with the wing and you can really see it here in the video. As I step back the wing's reasonably high and you can see the wing actually like pushing downwards. So I'm actually pushing down on the handles so that I can keep my body weight centered over the board rather than feeling like I need to lean back or, or lean into the turn to try and get some stability. So there you go. There's your three tips for now. Um, I hope they help a little bit. I'd love to know what you think. I'm early on, on this. My thoughts will no doubt change over the next few weeks, the next months, the next years, as I start to look at different ways in which we can teach this sport. I'd love to know what you guys think, if you've got other ways of trying to tackle some of these problems. Let's see where winging goes, early days, but uh, it's all good fun, and uh, hope to see you out in the water.